Out of the Ordinary Insights, brought to you by Investec Specialist Bank. Welcome back to Captains of Industry, where I'm talking to Carl Moyo, who is DuPont Director for Sub-Saharan Africa. Carl, we've talked about the company, and it sounds exciting, this big American company which is making big inroads in the development of Africa and doing good business by the sounds of it. But let's now, you talked about uh, people from uh, different countries coming together to do things. Now, you come from Africa yourself. Uh, Perhaps the first question is, how did you come to be in this position for DuPont? Well, maybe I'll take you back a little bit to, to my career. I've had a, the most exciting career, I would say, of, of almost anybody, and I, and I love my job. I'm, a, I'm enjoying, I'm excited, and... Uh, you wouldn't is, say so, hey? It, 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 <laughs> is, it is where I, I've wanted to be. I wanted to make a difference and contribute uh, uh, to Africa. I, I studied accounting, and uh, I thought I was going to be an accountant, but uh, no sooner had I started working, uh, then I discovered that that's not where my passion lay. Um, a few years ago, when I finished uh, university, I was working in the Transkei for a, a, a hardware and timber company, a small little company. But I could just feel that I, I wanted to do more. I wanted to lead. I wanted to make a difference in Africa. I wanted to contribute. And so I trekked my way to, to Cape Town. And in Cape Town, I, I got a job with, uh, with BP. And interestingly, just to show you, uh, my boss would not give me any leave. And I remember driving, knocking off at 6 in the evening and driving through from the Trans Sky to Cape Town through the night, arriving at 6 in the morning, taking a bath and going straight into an interview. I don't know how I made it, but I was, uh, I was successful and I joined uh, a, a BP in the downstream business. And at BP, I worked as a retail business manager. Within 18 months of joining BP, I was uh, fortunate to be nominated and uh, seconded to Australia to go and work in Australia for a few years, learning how to run a downstream business in a deregulated oil, oil, uh, deregulated market industry. What's a downstream business? Downstream business is where you, re- you retail uh, oil products, uh, petrol, yeah. uh, oils. Uh, that's the downstream business. The up, uh, upstream business is where you do the exploration. You must have learned a lot about branding there too because uh, <coughs> petrol is, is a commodity. Uh, it doesn't matter what station you fill up at unless people persuade you that that brand is the one you should go for. No, absolutely. I mean, you learn a lot about uh, the, the, the importance of positioning yourself uh, uh, correctly in the, in, in the minds of, of, of people. And I learned a lot about value-added services. I learned a lot about uh, setting up quick service restaurants, setting up a car wash, bakery, all these convenience capabilities so that you can mm-hmm. become more attractive to your customers because uh, fuel is fuel. They can go anywhere. But when you add all these conveniences mm. and you make it a one-stop shop, mm. uh, uh, customers will be more attracted. And I did that very successfully. I learned a lot about you know, being in a new culture, new company, new environment, and, 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 and new ways of doing business. Mm. It was a huge challenge. I was young, but I learned a lot. I then tracked my way back to, to Africa, back to, to South Africa, where I was heading the value-added business for, 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 for DuPont. Uh, I want to go backwards a little bit uh, and uh, look at uh, your upbringing in Zimbabwe. That's where, where you grew up. Yeah. Tell me what kind of upbringing it was, where you were and where you went to school and so on. So I did uh, my primary school in a little uh, church school uh, called Anderson. And uh, it was a small little school, very strict, uh, vegetarian diet, and, um, and looked after cows um, you know, after, after school. So I, w- I, w- I, I had no idea where, where I would end up in my dreams. Uh, Whereabouts in Zimbabwe? In, 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 a, in a little city called Gweru. Hmm. I, then, uh, yeah, I, I then moved on and uh, went to university. Also and Zimbabwe? Uh, no, I was in the U.S. I was at a little university called uh, Andrews University, uh, where I studied accounting. I then... Uh, now, that's not uh, necessarily a route that every Zimbabwean would take. So, uh, what was the springboard that got you from that little school, looking after the cows, eating his vegetarian food? What was the link between that and getting to the States? I mean, you must have worked hard. You must have had a family that backed you. Yeah, no, absolutely. I mean, I, up my parents were my dad was a cook and my mom was a domestic worker like the story that every african would tell you but uh, they worked for a church and the church would pay uh, subsidize the, the school fees and the rest of the fees i pay I, I worked hard to 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 pay for my school fees i i was a janitor i cleaned toilets i picked up rubbish i i would get into class so i'm wearing my overalls and i'm stinking but uh you know it was, uh, it was doable, and I didn't see the problem. And, and when you got to Andrews University, you say, what was that like? 
it was great, but lots of hard work because you, you know, you're working for your school fees and you were studying full time and you're trying to finish your degree in record time because you don't want to elongate it because then you have to pay more, you know. So it, that was great. But again, it was a multicultural uh, environment. I learned, I had roommates from Ethiopia, from many other countries. I learned to, 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 to interact with uh, people from across different cultures. Must have been uh, uh, strange politically too, because uh, I'm not sure where, where, what part of the Rhodesian political story you straddle. I mean, from your earlier memories, it was a very different place to where it is now. No, no, absolutely. Uh, you know, uh, you, 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 you know, uh, as you know, the history uh, apartheid is, uh, is is our history, and um, you know, you were in a, you couldn't do certain things, you couldn't go to certain schools, you couldn't, you know, and then you are now in an open, uh, open society. But I think human mind is powerful; it adjusts to any circumstance, and you can always rise up, uh, mm. rise above your challenges. Let's get back to to BP and uh, then Dupont and how you got to be at Dupont. Now it sounds like if you'd stayed at, at BP you could have gone all the way because you enjoyed it and they obviously liked what you were doing. So what made you shift from an area that you were obviously enjoying to DuPont? Well, I mean, uh, indeed, I enjoyed my work at, at, at BP. I think they had, they had seen me as, a, as, as certainly a, a potential. Uh, I moved on uh, up the ranks. I moved into different uh, uh, positions. I was in procurement for a while. Then my last job, I was an executive advisor to the chairperson. They brought in a new chairperson, an excellent guy, who was not coming from a fuel from the fuel industry, and I was assigned to to help him, you know, understand the fuel industry. And he was hands off. He he let me do everything. I led the strategy. I managed his team. I I literally got to know. I, I managed all his board activities. So I, I I became a general manager, and I learned to lead people to lead a company. Oh. And it was during this period that, uh, by coincidence, I got a call from a headhunter in in the UK who said, uh, we might have a job for you with, with DuPont in Switzerland. Now, I had never even thought of moving to Europe. I was enjoying my job. I was moving up the, the ladder quite fast, and I was destined for, for, for a good position. And um, I, I was invited uh, for an interview in Switzerland. I went to Switzerland. I, I had an eight-hour interview with different people. And uh, a few months later, they told me I had been successful. So I moved to Switzerland, where I headed up business development for East and Central Europe, Middle East, and Africa. Now, I, you said it's a science company. Now, yeah. you were an accountant. Yeah. So, how, what was the blend there? It was back to school for me. Mm. I had to read. I had files and files. I was reading. It was academic. I was reading. My first boss, he was a PhD in physics from Cambridge. You know, I looked at this guy in awe, and he would tell me, you know, how you know, everything works. And uh, it was quite difficult. But I think they were also quite cognizant that, you know, science people look at just scientific capability. Mm. And a business person looks and say, what's the application? What's the relevance? And I think that's the facet. But you have to understand the science. You have, you to, have to, to from the outside. You have to understand, at least to have, understand the, the high level value proposition. You know, what are we talking about? You know, what are we trying to do? What are we trying to, what are we trying to improve? And how does that impact? Mm. You have to have an, a, a, a high level understanding. But you don't have to understand the molecular structure of the makeup of your pen or your paper. Or you, you, that you can then bring other people who are experts uh, mm. to do. So I had a fantastic job in, in Switzerland, you know, heading up business development, working on projects in different businesses. I worked in, in Russia, where there was language barriers, uh, mm. there was uh, a cultural barriers. I worked in Poland, I worked in Turkey. Mm. I, I, I changed the business models. I, 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 I improved our go-to-market uh, strategies. And I worked in Africa during mm. that period. What about different cultures in terms of business, business cultures? Yeah. I mean, for example, people say that uh, South Africans who go to Australia, the Australians don't like them because we work harder than the Australians do. I mean, I don't know if that's true, but that's the sort of thing you say. Uh, the American culture is a very hard-working culture. They get two weeks leave a year, and that's it. Yeah. Uh, we get a lot more holidays than they do. What are the kinds of cultural, in, in the business sense, things that you came up against where you thought that's very different to Africa or to Australia? Well, I mean, if you look, uh, I would even take it more to Switzerland. Uh, you know, when you look at uh, the culture, it's quite different. I'm a hard worker, mm -hmm. but, uh, you know, you meet people that really, their life is, revolves around their work. That's what they do. They are so passionate about it. They are so dedicated to it. And, uh, and, 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 and they do a lot more. Uh, even in Australia, for me, it was, uh, it was a significant uh, cultural change to see in a service station, for instance, here, a job that would be done by 10 people. We could run a service station with three people, mm. sometimes with two people. So you can see that the culture, okay, you get paid more, but you do more. 
So the expectation on individual in terms of delivery uh, is much higher in some of these, uh, the productivity levels mm. are much higher, comparatively speaking. You trained as an accountant, you work for a science company now. Now, we all have jobs where we like doing some things very much part of the job and other things that we'd rather not do. What are the things that you enjoy the most about your position now? I think uh, in, in, there are many things that I enjoy, but I think some of the things that I enjoy is th that we are making a difference. I'm part of a company that is making a difference. It's not just talking about science. It's not just talking about uh, academically or on paper. Yeah, we're making a difference. Do you like it going is, out into the field and I, seeing I, the farmers that I, you mentioned? I enjoy going into, a farm, in, 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 into the field, working with a farmer and seeing, and seeing that difference that it makes. I enjoy going to Nigeria and taking a, far, a, 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 a guy who's working with wood, a carpenter, and bringing to him new methods of doing things, new materials, and all of a sudden, he moves from just being a carpenter supplying uh, woodwork into, into an industry, he's now serving banks, he's now serving uh, uh, hotels, he's now serving laboratories with our materials, with better, better methods, he's making better income, his life is changed, it's transformed. I'm passionate about that. You sound like you've had lots of good moments like that, uh, but you must have had some bad ones too. What's been your worst work experience where you thought, wow, it's really going to be difficult to get through this day? I think there have they've, they've been many, many, many instances uh, uh, like that. I, I, would, uh, I would say, for instance, uh, you know, uh, where I have tried, when I initially started to say to the com corporation, we need to be in Nigeria. You know, I wrote a plan, I went there, I did voice of, a voice of customer to really understand what their, their needs and see what we have and what they need, you know, is there a match up? I, I did research, I understood. I thought well, I came up with what I believed was a compelling business And they case. wouldn't listen? And they wouldn't listen. But you got them to listen in the end? I didn't give up. So I've had many of those days. It's a struggle. When you're a global company and you're trying to get the corporation to understand the importance of differential management. You have a slowing economy in, in Western Europe. You have a slowing economy in, in the US. And you're managing, to man, you're managing for cost control there. You're managing for growth here. Mm. You want cash today. You want investment for the medium and long term in Africa. Those two are con co cause a conflict. Well, it sounds like and, you're, uh, you're managing that conflict very well, but we'll have to stop now, Carl. I've been speaking to Carl Moyo, who is the DuPont Regional Director for Sub-Saharan Africa. Thank you for joining us on Captains of Industry.